All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Thursday, April 6, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, last day of the week here. It is Thursday. Markets are closed tomorrow, as you are all probably aware by now. Of course, we have the non-farm payroll number coming out tomorrow morning. Um, and this is like the oldest trick in the book from the governments. They do this all the time, even though I guess it's technically they're not really moving the date. But um, a lot of the time when there's going to be a bad jobs number, they'll try to move the date to a day that the market is closed if they can. Um, obviously, they're not moving it. It's just a holiday. But you'd think that logically you'd want to, you know, if everything's on the up and up, you'd want to just move the, the release date to Thursday. Right. So that financial markets can react to it. I'm not saying that means the number is going to be bad. I'm just saying I've seen them do this many times before. Um, you might say, well, if the number's bad, won't the market like that? Not necessarily. I mean, yes, bad news is good news right now, but the government doesn't, you know, it's not the, the, the government, the stock market isn't the be all end all for the government. Um, you know, we got to remember we have an election next year, so that's going to be on voters' minds. So the administration probably wants to keep that number as mild as possible. Um, Obviously, there's nothing they can do about it, really. But um, in any case, markets will react to it. The futures will be open, obviously, but stocks will obviously not trade. In any case, we had a nice little gap down this morning. A uh, little uh, kind of up move there, a little bear trap, higher low. And then we took off really all day long here. Triple Q is actually having the best day, um, up 65 basis points there. The Russell is barely positive, though, and that's still showing weakness again. Um, we've been talking about yellow flags a lot lately. And that continues to remain to be the case there. Semiconductors also um, basically at the flat line here, down 20 basis points. Um, again, another kind of yellow flag. Um, you know, not quite a red flag yet, but it's getting there. And you can see big tech here. Um, Apple, you know, breadth is not the greatest, right? It's Apple here. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft having a big move. Um, Google. Um, Amazon having a decent day. Meta's having a decent day. This is way overbought, though. Um, and then Tesla kind of bringing up the rear here. But if you look at the rest of the sectors here, um, look at IGV. It's off the lows, but um, barely green there. And we talked about the semis. Um, again, barely on the green side. The transports are slightly positive here, um, you know, up three-tenths of a percent. But again, really kind of a big tech-driven, um, even XLE is on the weaker side again so xle kind of and we talked about this also uh yesterday xle was doing a lot of the a lot of the heavy lifting we haven't had like a good broad-based rally here although the market is holding up and again we're gonna we're gonna respect that now i just don't see a ton of downside here at least in the near term we do have some some pretty you know these are not major gaps here um of support they're actually kind of unhealthy but for right now i don't see a ton of downside um, you know, as long as we hold, you know, I would say this green bar here, that 404 area on the spiders, the market is kind of in safe mode for now. But down the line, you know, give it a few weeks, uh, we get closer to May here and we start getting more and more data. Um, the narrative is going to change from bad news is good news to bad news is bad news. And uh, it's going to be a recession. And then the real kicker to me, um, when we can really see some actual selling pressure and not these little 3%, 5% moves, um, is when... The market realizes the Fed's not going to come to the rescue the way that it normally would um, when inflation is at zero or or negative um, because that's not the case. So that's going to be the kicker here. But right now, markets are holding up into the end of the week. Take a look on the weekly. We're basically just finishing with a weekly doji. And we had a sign of strength last week. So that keeps me in, um, you know, at least for the most part, bull mode here. Um, you know, not too bullish here, but I'm definitely giving the bulls the upside bias as we closed above that red bar high last week. And, you know, we're not following through, but we're not selling off. Nice tight range. There's nothing wrong. We have a three, excuse me, a three bar surge. And then a little doji candle that, you know, that does uh, signal the market can hold up here. And again, we are stuck inside of this wedge pattern. So definitely interested to see how that trades out over the month of April. Anyways, over to the Qs here. Um, so again, Qs holding up the best. Nice little pop here. Um, little dip and then a flip. So closing green, almost an engulfing reversal there on the daily for the uh, QQQ. Again, same thing. Inside candle there. Inside doji. Nothing wrong with that. That can still go up there. And I think it wants to go fill that gap. 
maybe even test that 100 week moving average that's up at 328 there's also another minor kind of gap there at 329 there on the queues that could be a target as well over to the russell here so again russell 2000 still on the weaker side it is barely green here just hovering right on right around the flat line there today and you can see um, below that 20 moving average. So definitely showing some relative weakness. Um, just not a good chart here. So, I mean, you're kind of bare flagging here. We did, you know, we did put in a nice little low there. We rallied up and now we're back below. Uh, just not a good, not a good chart here. This will come back to bite the market. But for right now, we're holding up, you know, thanks to big tech, the Dow here also getting a bid. Decent little inside bar action there on the Dow. So if that consolidates, that can get up to 340. That's about all it's got though. Um, there's a lot of resistance up here, uh, but it's hanging in there for now. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. And again, kind of like the spiders here, a little weekly doji, but kind of an outside week there as well. Again, this is a flight to safety, right? So this is not really, we're not seeing the Russell and the NASDAQ lead. The NASDAQ's leading today, but um, we're seeing the Dow lead. That's not a bullish sign. And you're still actually, even, even the Dow here, um, still below this red bar high on the weekly. So even though the Dow is leading, it's still not even that uh, that strong here. But in either either case, um, markets are holding up for now. So we'll give them that respect. All right, let's get over some sectors here. SMH again, nothing's really changed. We broke that um, that falling wedge here, that smaller one we talked about yesterday. No major follow through to the downside. If we flip back out of the intraday, you know, we basically put in the low right in the first thing in the morning and then we took off and now just kind of consolidating, but not really the greatest. Like you look at the cues here, that's a V shape. Look at the spiders. That's a V shape. We kind of V shaped in the morning and then just kind of tailed off really all day long. Um, so not the greatest, you know, you want to see follow through after that. And this is still red here. I mean, we got we got 30 minutes left. I mean, we could get a pop into the close. Looks like the markets are going to bid up a little bit here, but this is still showing weakness um, and I think it wants to get down to this trend line here so we'll, we'll watch for that um, you know it's holding up for now if the market bids this will probably hold up obviously um, everybody's favorite stock Nvidia um, is holding up and, and leading the semis higher so that's probably putting a cap on some of the selling pressure that just does not want to go down and um, you know this is just amazing short covering going on here in Nvidia I don't know how much more it has I mean it's very top heavy um, and honestly you know, this is probably gonna, like one of the most no brainer shorts ever. Um, if you can just withstand a little bit of short term kind of grind, um, maybe this can make one more higher high. But, you know, <laughs> it's about as top heavy as it gets being up 100 percent year to date. And we're only one quarter in um, just incredible move there. But anyways, over to IGV. So cloud hovering right around that 300 handle there. Let's take a look at the weekly again, little inside week. Um, 200 moving average. You, that's where we stalled out last week. And again, can this get up to that 310 level? It sure can. Um, but that's about all the upside I see right now. But it's holding up, so we'll respect that. Dow Transports. Um, again, we touched on that earlier. You know, it's trying to hold the 200 moving average, but just not a good look. So we had a nice little up move. We pushed up on Friday, and we've just basically just given all of that back. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, when you lose a breakout bar like that, especially over, above an important level, um, that is a major, major red flag. So the transports have retraced more than 50% of that move, and they're going to close below the you know 50% of this green candle from last week, which was supposedly reclaiming this important green bar low, which we you know, obviously failed a few weeks ago. So that is back below. This is talking to us here. Um, so I think you know we're going to get a sell. I don't think we're quite there yet, as I've mentioned, but we're getting closer and closer here. And this definitely sells that to me. Um, and the same thing with the semis and the Russell, as we've talked about earlier. All right, transports, let's get over to bonds here. So bonds uh, backing off a little bit here on the two year. So down 15 basis points, lower highs there. Um, we'll see what it does here. It's still just kind of in a consolidation pattern. The 10 year uh, note is up. So 10 year hanging out decently and the 30 year actually making a new new high all the way back to got to go back to september so 30 years hanging in there again um if we go over to the yield you know it's getting a little you know, up move one two pull back and then a pop so we'll give it that i mean it could probably get a little bit higher here but the yields if we go over to the tyx i don't see a ton you know i've talked about this here this is this is your kind of downside here this this just this area that's really all i see um, right now in bonds. I know everybody thinks rates are going to go back to zero. They're not. So um, that, that's just really, you know, it's as simple as that. And then the 30 year or the 10 year looking at about three. So about 3% somewhere in that ballpark. But anyways, let's get back over to uh, what else we got housing XHB. 
down half percent again weak um housing starting to react to the data guys so um you know data is coming in weaker bad news is bad news for housing it looks like um xhb again just like the transports had a nice breakout bar last friday straight back down um it's coming off the lows somebody wants to hold it at that 64 handle there um so it's gotten three tests but it, you've had you've whacked on this three times here you get one more lower high that's not going to hold and you're going down to that 200 moving average um ultimately i think this has a ton of downside in it um it's just defied gravity i think a lot of people saw the writing on the wall and tried shorting it and that's why it's been able to hold up because as the markets come off the lows obviously you get those squeezes um but i think we had a pretty good washout and a blow off top there in february and we have not made highs since then so again we'll watch uh, xhb and the itb here coming back in losing those moving averages this is still looking like a bear setup here um you know it's holding trend for now but you know you lost that 50 and 20 day um you know it might reclaim the 20 day by the end of the day who knows we've got about 30 minutes left but um, again, same kind of chart there, giving back those gains from last week, VNQ. VNQ's got a little inside bar here, so this can hold up. So we have an up move, and then we're inside of the green. You know, I mean, it could probably go test 84. I mean, maybe 85, 50, uh, excuse me, yeah, 84 to 85, we'll call it. Um, if you get through that, you got these ne that necktie of the 50 and 100 that's really all the upside i see right now but you know it's holding up if you lose this green bar and that 20 moving average this is <laughs> just not a good chart all right anyways let's get over to uh, xlf fins here uh, believe it or not fins actually holding up and they actually were strong all day so you can see um xlf barely gapped down this morning whereas the spiders you know actually had i wouldn't say it was a significant gap but um it was more so than uh more so than, than the XLF. And the KRE actually was flat and had a nice surge. So financials, you know, go figure, had a nice day there. I think, I want to say, uh, FRC, yeah, FRC was up 4%. So maybe starting to stabilize a little bit here. But the KRE, you know, almost made a new low yesterday. Again, you guys know the drill. I don't see a ton of downside right now. I also think upside is limited. There's the KBE that's hanging in there. Uh, broker dealers here. This is still a bear pattern. This does have downside, though. Um, you come and make another lower high or two. That will um, get through this 420 area, um, then ultimately down to 400. So uh, broker dealers in much, much worse technical shape here. There's much more downside in the cards. Uh, crude here. So over to energy, basically flat on the day. Um, I did move out of my SCO position. You know, thanks, OPEC, I guess. Um, you know, we tried shorting the basically a back test. So and this is a good setup that I'm going to take pretty much every single time I see it. So you get a breakdown here and then we get a retrace to where we broke down, we took a short there. And then, you know, we got the gap up on OPEC. So nothing you can do about that. It was a small position anyway, so um, didn't really hurt too bad. But, you know, what are you going to do here? I still think, though, however, I know we had a nice gap. I still think you get up into this area. I think crude is possibly a short here. There's two sides to this. So yes, obviously supply is gonna come offline, but OPEC knows what's coming. They see the data, they see the recession coming. We're probably gonna, you know, historically you do see, even when OPEC makes cuts, it's because they see uh, slowdowns coming. And a lot of the time oil can sell anyway. Now, would it, can we put in a higher floor? It's certainly possible. Um, I think crude's going a lot higher um, over the next couple of years, like all-time highs possibly. Um, but for right now, it looks to me like they just saw the short interest, and we all saw the charts. I mean, the short interest got huge. Um, and by the way, this is why you don't chase. This is why you wait for the retrace. This is this was where my short entry was. Okay, so I didn't. You know, a lot of people chased it down here, and they got absolutely hosed. Um, but you know, that's just how you you know manage your your entries there. And again, I was shorting this retest of this trend line not a ton of risk there um but in any case we'll see what it does i think if you get up into this area here you got that 200 there a little overbought there's just a big gap there too so we'll see what it does but um crude hanging in there it's holding the gains for now and we'll leave it at that the jobs number maybe that'll move it tomorrow maybe we'll try to stick it to everybody when the when the markets are closed we'll see what happens anyways xle um basically kind of an inside day down 1.4 percent just kind of hanging in this area 
We'll see if that rolls over and fills the gap eventually um, as well. I'm not in love with any of these chart patterns here on XOP or OIH either. OIH getting back below that 280 level. So not a great look there on the weekly, especially to gap up 20 MA rejection. And technically, um, just so you get a little educational thing here, technically to my methodology, this is still an inside bar. Um, even though you gapped above it, you're going to close back inside of it. Technically, this is still an inside bar on OIH. Um, and meaning that you're still you still have a bear pattern. I know it's sloppy, but I've seen this happen before where you'll gap above uh, a level and then it comes back in. You get everybody to buy in at the highs and then they take it back lower. So this is technically an inside bar until proven otherwise. You get above 292.82 on a weekly close, that's negated. But until then, that's still a, a pattern. So um, definitely interesting dynamic there. We'll be watching OIH into next week. Um, that gas taking a big hit here today. It is off the lows. Take a look at the hourly here. Um, this is about a 10% sell in, you know, pretty much just the COMEX trading trading window. So 8 a.m. all the way to 2.30. And then you got a big tail candle there at the lows through that $2 area. That'll be interesting to see how that trades tomorrow and into next week. I still like the seasonality here, but obviously taking a big hit here today. Over to the dollar index. DXY just kind of hanging in there again we had a little bit of a micro kind of bear pattern there on the daily and it's just kind of dancing around here at the lows it is you know it had a nice surge earlier when markets were lower obviously dollar coming back in that gave the market a lift and it's actually kind of hanging in there okay I still think this has to go down and test that double bottom area uh, gold here again still holding up still inside of this green bar nothing's really changed it's just very overbought um, but that's what you have when you get fear and you have a banking crisis so that comes with the territory here um, but gold's holding up i can't say anything bad about it other than it is overbought silver same thing very overbought um, but you know nice green bar inside candle one two pullback this needs to do a lot more consolidating if it's going to go higher though um, but it's hanging in there okay platinum kind of pairing yesterday's losses a little bit you still have an inside bar there um, again, you know, I'd give it the upside bias to 1040. That's about it for right now. Um, a lot of resistance up in that area. And then copper here kind of all over the map today. But this may have now a daily inside bar bearish. So um, kind of just sticking in that area. If we start to push lower, we have a little bit of support around that uh, pivot low there at 382. And then you guys know I'm looking for 375 uh, after that. Uh, Bitcoin not doing a whole lot here. Again, nothing's changed, just kind of stuck in this range. If I can get my Bitcoin chart up here, just bear with me. Oh, I closed out my Chrome window. I'm sorry. Here, I'll pull it up on the futures. I apologize for that. So we'll just have to look at the futures, but nothing's changed. I mean, you have up move, bullish consolidation until proven otherwise. Again, I still think it needs to pierce 30,000 before any sort of major correction happens. But anyway, it's going to wrap it up here. Let's get back over to the spiders. Um, so again, they're hanging in there. Okay, we got 20 minutes left. It looks like we'll just be sideways into the end of the day. And we basically have a weekly doji as far as the markets are concerned. Again, um, I think we're on borrowed time here, but we're going to give the markets the upside bias for now. Um, very interested to see how uh, the market reacts to that jobs data come Monday. But for right now, I don't think there's any major red flags just yet just several yellow flags anyways guys can wrap it up here you guys take care come find me on carnivaltrades.com talk to you all next week